is what I call my new vegetable garden. It's where I had the key to polytunnel, which I removed because I found I couldn't get enough tomatoes and aubergines ripening. So now I've just put some veg in here and I do mainly my brassicas in here. But as you can see in this, these few raised beds, they are really prolific. The coriander has been growing like this for weeks and weeks and it's only just started to bolt. I've got lots of cut and come lettuce. I've got some carrots, which we've nearly finished. I've got spring onions, chard, purple cabbage, um, all sorts of things, beetroot over there. So it's a highly productive little bit, but what I'm talking about today is the cauliflower. Now cauliflower is for many growers the bane of their life because it's one of the most difficult vegetables to grow, partly because it likes a good regular moisture level and so it, it does need watering and commercially I think they water it with something like four gallons per square yard every week in dry periods. So I don't do what they say with watering. I water them well when they go in but then I just water them very occasionally after that. So how do I do it? First of all I started them off in my usual polystyrene seed trays. I sowed them around March and then I planted them out here about four to six weeks later. And the variety I've gone for is deep purple and it's an F1 variety. Now with this deep purple variety, as I said, it's F1, so it means it has got more vigour. But the purple ones are always, always seem to have slightly less strong cauliflower taste than the white ones. And so when I use them for salads and things, I think that's actually quite nice. But if you want a really strong cauliflower taste, then maybe go for the white. The other thing they always say is that cauliflower really likes a rich soil. Now, I never add any fertiliser to my vegetables at all. I do add mulches, I add compost, so I feed the soil, but I don't add any artificial fertilisers. Now, the next thing I did, which they always say you shouldn't do, is I planted them very close together. So in this little bit, and my cauliflowers are from there to there, so far, um, I've picked three big cauliflowers and I think I've got about seven or eight big cauliflowers to pick still. So I planted them way closer. They're, they're about 30 centimetres, about a foot apart at most. Um, and normally, if you're growing them commercially, you'll plant them probably 56 centimetres apart, almost two foot apart to give them lots of room because they love their moisture. They always say you should really firm in brassicas well when you plant them. They should have a very compacted, firm seed bed. And I've never done that. And I think that's really an old wives' tale. I don't think farmers growing them commercially actually do that. And I think now the new F1 hybrids, the varieties that are bred to be much more vigorous and consistent, really don't need that. And when I pull my Brussels sprout plants out, um, at the end of the growing season, I can just pull them out. You know, they are no way firmed in, but they're still very productive with very tight, lovely tight sprouts. So here I've got this, this head here, this um, curd, and as you can see, it's probably 20 centimetres across. It's quite large and it's this beautiful pale purple colour. Um, and you see there has been a bit of um, damage from insects on the leaves, but the cover keeps most of it off and as you can see its neighbour is also very close this one is definitely ready for cutting it's just going over we have had exceptionally hot dry weather for the last month or two really it's extraordinary just what cauliflowers hate and what some people do is they actually tie the leaves over them if the leaves don't naturally grow over they just tie them over like that to sort of branch them to keep the sun from ruining the curd but I'm now going to pick this one um, and you'll see it is really nice. You can hear the cows mooing because whenever they see me come here they know I give them the old carrot top or cabbage leaf or something like that but this is just about to go over but it will make a really nice something. I'll probably do a curried cauliflower cheese from Ottolenghi which is absolutely delicious but I think the secret to their success is basically the cover because they've been covered since day one and because the soil level down in these red raised beds is probably um, 20 centimetres, you know, almost a foot below the top of the raised bed. So you've got the raised bed 
that you've then got the cover over the top, I think it increases the level of humidity. And I think probably that is one of the main factors that I've had such good success for two years running, despite the fact that I'm doing everything quite different from how you're meant to do. And um, I think if you try this, and I've got really quite a dense insect fleece on this. Um, it's not a fleece, actually, it's a netting. It's to keep off flea be beetles and things. There I've got the scaffold netting, and that's also doing really well and is much cheaper. But this, not only does it keep all the cabbage white butterflies out, a lot of the aphids and things like that, even though I'm not tying it down, it also increases the humidity. And I think the humidity is probably key to it and it stops evaporation from the water so there we are there's my lovely cauliflowers um, i will now cut off the outside leaves and give them to them but i think this is an amazing summer veg um, because it is so good for as i've mentioned for salads for crudités just cutting it into bits and dipping it into homemade mayonnaise or a chili sauce or anything like that or making putting in any number of salads it's brilliant with nuts it's brilliant with um, chives onions carrots all sorts of things um, and the summer cauliflowers generally you will have a slightly tighter spacing than the winter cauliflowers which you will need a good two foot for for these you can go closer but you can also plant them at sort of six inch centers 150 mil and then you can get the mini cauliflower heads now the final thing i have to say is when you plant any plant vegetable or shrub or herbaceous closer together the main reason that they suffer from is they tend to suffer from moisture stress more and when plants suffer from moisture stress, they tend to grow um, at different rates. So you'll get some plants that will grow massively and you'll get others that will be dwarfed. So you get greater variation in plant size. And that's just a known factor. And so I think for me, for many vegetables, that's quite good. If I was a commercial grower and I wanted to harvest the whole field of cauliflowers in one go, that would be bad, but because it's for me and I like one now, I might like one in three days time, one a week later, I have a staggering of my harvesting, which can only be good. Um, so I think that that's a, a big advantage really. But also with F1s, you'll also get more uniformity. But then I think because there's so much advance in plant breeding, if you can use an F1 variety, which gives you that vigor, I think, you might as well use it and take advantage of it. Well, anyway, I hope you try cauliflowers um, and I hope you enjoy them. They are delicious and one of the very finest vegetables you can grow. And when you've grown them, you feel a real sense of achievement because they are not the easiest. <laughs>